Hello. So welcome to the steps video, as it were. Um, and really simply, I'm going to take you through the steps for you to go through, as I would do if we were here in person. And I've got to be honest with you, my content, it's not very much led by me because everything you need is in your A4 book on the steps to freedom in Christ. What I would say is get yourself somewhere quiet, get yourself a space and give yourself some time to work through this at your own pace. Be ready to pause this video and just spend some time with God. Don't rush. It's so easy to rush through this, but actually don't. I'll try and help you out. We'll give you some suggestions on times uh, that you might want to give for each step. But actually, it's down to you how much time you put into each. And you may end up spending more time on some steps than other steps. And that's fine because actually we all have different experiences and we all have different things that we need to let go of and different things we need to embrace. This is a day where the Holy Spirit can bring things to your mind when and you're making a space for him to do that. That's all it is. And what the steps program does is it just takes you through an easy way to process this, to pray this and to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to let go of this stuff and to hold on to the truth. For this, you might need a notebook um, to, or some pen, pen and paper to write down uh, just some general notes to see what you think. But before we start, it's really important that we're ready. OK, now, again, there is a whole preparation thing in the Steps to Freedom page on pages one and pages two, pages three and pages four. And all the bits in bold are there for you to pray and you can pray them in your head or you can pray them aloud. And it's the same with the declarations. Now, you can go through that preparation process any time you want. And I take myself personally through the Steps day every six months. I'm, I'm very much used to it now. Yet there is on page four a review of your life, which you can do. But I would say don't get caught up on that. Actually get caught up in the content. You can spend a lot of time doing the preparation, but there's no better preparation than just praying and asking God to be with us and to open up the eyes of our hearts and for us to be open on this process. And literally, as I say, you wouldn't be getting a different experience if you're in the building with me. I'd be saying the same things and literally stepping off and giving you space and privacy to do this with God. So before we go any further, let's pray as we prepare ourselves. God, I want to thank you that you are present with me all the time. You are present with me in this room right now. God, you're all knowing. God, you're all powerful. God, you're everywhere. And we worship you. We are dependent from you. And God, apart from you, we can't do anything. I choose right now to believe your word that teaches us the right way, that teaches us how to resist the devil, how to submit to you. Holy Spirit, will you guide us to the truth today? We ask for your protection and your guidance as we go through some of these things that we've been through and ask that you help set us free. We want to know your will and do your will. In your name we pray. Amen. So we're going to start with step one and step one in your book is page five. OK, it's called counterfeit versus real. And basically what this does is it helps us to lead us through any experiences that we might have had, which are fake experiences or experiences that were dangerous to our own hearts. That we might have been involved in stuff that we think that was nothing that we've dabbled in, but actually it has a very serious impact on our spiritual lives. OK, and so actually it's a chance for you to say, I'm sorry that I've dabbled in all of these weird things and a chance for us to be set free if any of these things have still got a hold over us. Depending on your past experience will depend on how long you, you spend on this step. And I could read this out to you, but actually you, you can be reading this yourself. But you'll see on page five, there is this checklist of a non-Christian spiritual experience checklist. And all of these things are ways of spiritual experiences that we may have opened up the door to. In our past, knowingly or unknowingly, that may knowingly or unknowingly have a hold on. us. So really simply, all you need to do is pray. God, open up my eyes to see this. And then I'd recommend just 
either in choir or putting on some quiet Christian music or worship music or just in the space that you've got. Say, Holy Spirit, do have I got any connection to these? And literally, in that sort in that quiet, work your way through the list. Tick any that you have. And then for each one, simply pray that you are disconnected from that. There's the prayer there in bold to start you. And there's also the prayer on page six. And the prayer on page six is so helpful. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess I've participated in. And then you can name the things you participated in. I found this a really helpful experience. But again, don't rush through it. Stop. Pause. Pray. Go through the list. And then if you have ticked off anything or if anything has been brought to mind, write it down, jot it down. And then when you feel that you've gone through everything that may have brought that be, be part of this step, pray that prayer um, on page six. And that will really just and pray it out and ask the Holy Spirit to break those chains. Again, that's all we would be doing if we were in this building. But you can do it now in the privacy of your home. So I'm just going to pray this prayer on verse five. And then please hit pause. Don't just skip on to the second step. Hit pause and spend as long as you need to going through this and praying freedom from it. And then when you're done, when you're ready, hit play again and we'll go on to the next step. So step one's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please bring to my mind anything and everything that I have done, knowingly or unknowingly, that involves occult, cult or false religious teachings and practices. Grant me the wisdom and grace to renounce any and all spiritual counterfeits, false religious teachings and practices. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Now pause. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and lead you through this. Pray those prayer and pray on page six. And when you've done that, however long it takes, come back and we'll do step two together. So step two, deception versus truth. Now, Often in my experience, this is one that people spend a long time in because there's a lot of deceptions uh, that we fall foul of. And what I love about this is actually on page eight and page nine, it takes us through some of the ways that we have been deceived by the world, by ourselves, or we've defended ourselves in a wrong way. And actually, it's really helpful, healthy to spend time Going through each of these, there's Bible verses attached to each of them. You might want to read those Bible verses. But actually, it's really helpful to ask, Holy Spirit, have I believed this? Have I thought this? Have I done this for each of them? And you'll know if you have or not. And then what I love again about each of these sections, there is a prayer for you to pray. And they're simple prayers. The other thing that might help you is on page 10, there's statements of truth. Maybe after you've prayed, you might want to read those statements of truth yourself to remind yourself and pray that those statements of truth get written on your heart. But again, spend as long as you need to in step two. Don't rush through it. Put some music on, make yourself a space and pray through it. But again, I'm going to pray that prayer on page seven. And then I want to encourage you, pray it too. Press pause and work your way through the second step. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the truth and I desire to live by faith according to your truth. The truth will set me free. But in many ways, I have been deceived by the father of lies, the philosophies of this fallen world. And I have deceived myself. I choose to walk in the light, knowing that you love and accept me just as I am. As I consider areas of possible deception, I invite the spirit of truth to guide me into all truth. 
Please protect me from all deception as you search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the, ever, ever, in the everlasting way. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So again, this is the time. Press pause. Work your way through those pages slowly. In peace, in quiet. You might want some worship music on in the background. And pray over these things, asking the Holy Spirit to do something in you. And then when you're done, stop pressing pause and we'll go on to step three. So step three. Oh my goodness. Now step three, I have spent so long in step three in my life. And this is where a lot of people spend a quite a lot of time. It's about bitterness versus forgiveness this is where we do our business about forgiveness this is where we actually start forgiving people you've, you've done the session session seven all about forgiveness but actually it's really helpful to stop and go through this and this the first time i did this took ages and really simply with step three all i did was i asked god to show me who i needed to forgive and why I needed to forgive them. What did I need to forgive them of? The people that I'm angry towards or bitter towards or resentful towards. And I asked the Holy Spirit to show me these people and what they've done. And that can be quite a painful experience. I sat there with tissues the first time and a notepad. I scribbled down all these past hurts that I'd been through. But then as I prayed, to forgive these people as I prayed to let go of my anger, to let go of my resentment, to hold on to God, to let go of that bitterness. God started to do a healing work in me. Spend as much time as you need to in this. I've said this before and I'll say it again, but this is such an important step. Make the time. Pray, Holy Spirit. Show me who I need to forgive and what I need to get need to forgive them for. Pray about being revealed. Who are you angry about or resentful towards or bitter towards and why? And then and write them down. And then through each one, there's a prayer actually on page 12 at the bottom. There's two prayers there which are really, really helpful. Use those prayers for each person and don't just pray one prayer for the group. This really works when you pray for each person and situation in turn. And it takes time. But each is an important healing step. So I'm just going to pray for you as you start this step three. Do not rush through it. God, as we go on step three together and we look at forgiveness, Holy Spirit, will you reveal to us who we need to forgive and why? any anger or resentment or bitterness towards people we might have and will you show us who we need to let go of and what we need to let go of and why please lord reveal this to us and as you do may your healing hand be on, on us knowing that you are the god of love and you're not revealing these things to us to make us feel pain but to help us to let go of that hook that's in our cheek in your name we pray lord. amen and really simply, I'm going to press pause, spend as much time as you want doing this. And then when you're ready, go get yourself a drink, come back and we'll go into step four together. So step four and step four is an interesting one. It's rebellion versus submission. And this is about any time that we have um, rebelled against authority figures, whether that's the government, our parents, our legal guardians, our carers, our employers, our partners, our church leaders, or even rebelled against God. And this is one that I found very easy to skip over this and go, I don't struggle with that. But I want to encourage you, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you if you do struggle in these areas. Or you might not now, but you might have in the past. 
and it's so helpful. Even if you don't struggle with it now, but you have done in the past, it's so good to acknowledge it. It's so good to pray the release from it as well. Because some of these things have got a greater hold on us than we realize. There's that, it's all on page 14. And actually that prayer is there at the top to start you. And then there's some suggested tick boxes there. Work your way through and stop before you move and ask the Holy Spirit for each one, do I have an issue with this? See what he brings to mind. And then after you've worked your way through it and make any notes you might want to through this, there is that prayer at the bottom. And again, pray that, not just one prayer for all of it, but for each part of it. So again, I'm just going to pray. And then please pause and, and do step four. God, I thank you that you are all authority belongs to you and you call us to live in submission. Submission isn't a negative word, but a healthy word. And forgive us for when we have rebelled. And Holy Spirit, will you lead us now to show us where we may have rebelled or kicked against authority figures unnecessarily and in a damaging way. And will you lead us into the truth of freedom, of walking in submission to you, God. In your name we pray. It. Amen. So really simply, press pause, do step four, as I've said. And when you're ready, come back and we'll do step five together. So step five, <laughs> I think, again, the first time I did step five, I skipped over it. I pretended I didn't have an issue with it at all. And the truth is, a lot of us do. Pride is a very human feeling. And actually, I think pride affects us more than we think. And what, again, I love about step five on page 15 is it shows us all of these areas here that we might be struggling with. Again, be open. Don't close yourself off to this. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you what needs to be done. Make a space, put on some worship music and work your way through these things. And don't feel convicted negatively when you come up with this. But actually, no, the Holy Spirit is showing you if you struggle with any needs. Why? So he can set you free from it. And again, there's that prayer at the bottom of the page. Don't pray for it. Pray it for each situation and issue. And it's so helpful to do this. And I think. You'll find if you make the space and you're open, you'll probably find a lot more areas in, in this section than you would have thought originally. So I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit is able to reveal things to you that you might not have seen before and that you wouldn't feel condemnation. But you would know that he's leading you towards the truth to set you free. So. Holy Spirit, we ask you now. Show us where we've been too proud. Show us where we've tried to go our own way. We would call to live in submission to you. And may we hear your voice knowing that we're not condemned, but you want to set us free from any pride that's holding us back. Will you give us that peace of knowing that you're with us always as you lead us through this step? In your name we pray it. Amen. And again, pause now. Do step five. And when you're ready, come back and we'll go through step six together. Step six is an interesting one. Um, and I when I first did Freedom in Christ, I spent a long time on step six. Step six is about all the, the sins that we get caught up in where we get caught up in that sin cycle of I've done it again. And you, you say, I'm sorry, and I repent. But then you end up doing it again. It's those things that you end up doing again and again and again. And you wish that you didn't, but you do. That flesh, that human nature in you that keeps revisiting, that keeps doing this. And we all have our own things that we get stuck in this sin and confess cycle. Again, the key is here. You're not being condemned. You're not, this isn't, you're not doing it in front of anyone. This is for you. And this is saying, God, this is where I struggle. This is the repeated sin that I keep doing again and again and again. And God, I don't want to keep going round the circle. I want to break the cycle and I want to be set free from this sin. 
and it's asking the Holy Spirit to show you that as well. And know that he can. Read the information, pray the prayers, make a space, listen to the Holy Spirit and respond and pray, knowing that he will set you free. So let me just pray for step six, because again, this can be some challenging stuff. On pages um, 17 and 18 and 19 there are some, and 20, there are some prayers to help you if you're struggling with any of those issues. They're all there. You might not be struggling with any of those, but there are prayers there that are there to help you. So again, I'm going to pray and leave you to step six. God, I thank you. I thank you that you don't want us to be living in this sin and confess cycle, that you want to set us free from our sin. And we don't you don't want us to be trapped going round in a circle again and again and again. As we pray these prayers, Holy Spirit, will you reveal to us where we are stuck? And Holy Spirit, in the power of Jesus name, will you break us free from the bondage that we're experiencing of sin? May again, we know this isn't condemnation. But this is you revealing the truth so we can be set free. And we ask you to be at work to break those chains. In your name we pray. Amen. So again, work your way through it. There's those prayers on 18, 17, 18, 19 and 20. If you want to pray them as well. But again, whatever sin confess cycles you're in, pray over each of them. Asking the Holy Spirit to pray. And when you're ready, come back for step seven. So hit pause. So step seven, this is the last step. Um, and this is one that is really important, actually. That actually some stuff we're trapped in because of family issues. The, you know, it's sin that's been passed down through the family. Or issues that have been passed down through the family. And it's right that we ask God to cut that chain. We don't want that to keep getting passed on again and again and again. Um, so again, it's really simple. You just ask the Holy Spirit. There's the prayer there on page 21 to reveal to you if there is anything. That has been passed down through family lines that's not of God. It's declaring your new creation in Christ. And, set, and stepping out of that. So, but again, don't just dismiss it. Make a space and listen and make time. Put some worship music on, make a space. Spend as long in this as you want. So again, I'll pray. And then we'll press pause and then we'll come into it. God. I thank you that you want to set us free, not just from the sin that's in our own lives, but from the sin that is in our past and in our family. And God, will you please set, reveal to us any family sin that, that is there that's been passed down from generation to generation. I thank you that you want to set us free from that. And we are new creations in you. So Holy Spirit, will you reveal to anything we need you to break the chains of so we're able to pray that out and trust that you will do it. In your name we pray. Amen. So I want you to press pause and go ahead and make some space for step seven. So there are still pages left that you might want to look through, which are just additional resources or appendices or extra prayers that might help you. This isn't just a one-off thing for me. I do this every six months. It's so helpful, helpful for my life. This video is going to stay up on the on the on our YouTube channel for a bit, so you can go through that one anytime you want. But you don't need the video. You've got the book. All I've done is lead you through those steps. But you don't need me or the course to be able to do that. Say so I do it myself every six months. Some of the stuff that I did on the first time I did Freedom in Christ was dealt with straight away, and some of the stuff I had came I've come back to again and again and again. And I will keep doing that. But I want to thank you for making the time and the space to do freedom in Christ with us. And I just pray that you'll continue to know the freedom in Christ that comes with his word and the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can pray and get that wherever you are. And I'll see you at the next course.
Thank you for making time for us today.